Alrighty, so I'm going to show you 28 of my buck knives, and this is my entire buck knife collection. And buck is what started it for me for knife collecting. It was actually this buck 110 right here was my first buck that I bought in 2015. I actually got this at Walmart for like $28. It was a really good deal. It came with a nylon sheath. Just the original Buck 110, nothing too special about it. I did add that quick thumb stud for one hand opening. But other than that, nothing that I really did or modify this knife. Just a good looking Buck 110. And it came with this nylon sheath. Pretty light, nothing special. This is gonna be a longer video because I'm gonna go through each and one of these knives, not in too much detail, but I just wanted to show and tell them. And this Buck 110 was actually from my dad. He gave it to me about a year ago. I guess he's had it for many, many years. I think this is a 91 edition. I don't have the Buck Tang chart on hand right now, but if I can recall, it is a 91. But again, just another Buck 110. No sheath with this one. I think he might have lost or thrown away the sheath a long time ago because he doesn't carry knives on his belt. But I can't say too much about the Buck 110 that you already don't know. So here is a Buck 112, and I got this one off eBay used. Just a little compact version of the 110. There we go. You can see some use on the blade and there's some markings on the wood, but the wood scale is really nice. I like the striped look of it. Brass bolsters. So this one actually came in a leather sheath and when I got it, it smelled like smoke. So I'm guessing the previous owner smoked, but a nice used, good quality leather sheath. Got that bluing from the brass from it just sitting in the pouch for a while. Let me see. It still smells a little bit like smoke, but not bad. All right, then we have the, the mini 110. So this is the Buck 55. And this is a little compact guy. This is basically the Buck 110's baby son right here this is a good pocket carry knife if you're trying to stick to buck and you love the shape and size or not size but the shape and looks of the buck 110 the buck 55 is a great little option basically you have the same wood handles brass bolsters and that 420 hc blade clip point very nice, very nice. And his lock back. I think with buck knives, solid lock backs. Also very slim. Light too. All right, then I'm gonna move on to the Buck 300 series. I've shown this before. Um, I'm just gonna go quickly over these. So this is the smallest one. This is the Buck 305. And you have these black plastic handles on them. I bought this one used. Pretty, pretty worn from their previous owner. So we have a two-bladed knife. Got that clip point in a sheep's foot. Got that buck anvil shield. One back spring and the brass liners. But very good compact knife. They do not make this one anymore, unfortunately, but you can get it on eBay. And the same one with this one. This is the Buck 309. Just kind of a larger version of the 305. You have that clip point blade and then a pen blade as your secondary. Very nice. So this one you can see it's kind of grinded down. The handles are the plastic handles. I didn't do that, but 
Not sure if that was intentional. Kind of looks like it. Maybe someone didn't like the grooves that it came with. Or maybe it melted. Who knows? But here's the 309. They do not make that one anymore. Here is the Buck 303. This is a Stockman. Your medium-sized Stockman pattern. Also very used. Got that clip point and then a sheep's foot blade. And then that famous spay blade. Dogs, you better watch out. <clears throat> I'm not sure if they actually use this on dogs back then. I know they usually spayed cattle with the spade blade, but I know there's someone out there that probably spayed their dog or cat with a good old slip joint. So this is a buck 301. This is a larger Stockman pattern. Buck 301. There you go. Just a larger version of the 303. The same type of blades. You got that clip point and then you have a sheep's foot. And then another spay. This was a spay, but totally grinded down to look like a like a letter punch, pretty much. There we go. This is one of the two three ones I have. This one was made, I believe, in the 80s, and then this one was made in the early 2000s. A lot newer version. The main difference is the newer version has stainless back springs and there's three of them and the older version only has two back springs and they're not stainless it's right there three back springs no brass liners like the older version everything is stainless but same setup very nice good looking clip point yeah Buck 301. Got that sheep's foot. I mean, you already know. Just gonna. Got that nice buck shield. All right. And then here's a buck 302 solitaire, which is a single bladed knife. It's basically the same size length as the Buck 301. It's just a skinny one. This one went on a diet and lost two blades. <laughs> so it just has the one clip point blade, a good carrier in pocket because it's nice and slim. You can slip it right in there. Won't even feel it. A lot lighter too. This is the Buck 302. My collection isn't the biggest. I know a lot of people that have a lot bigger collections. But I just wanted to show you my bucks. Because why not? This is a longer video, so nice to watch on a Sunday if you're outside chilling. Here's a Buck 307 Wrangler, I believe. Yeah, so this is a slightly bigger version of the 301. Yeah. This is the granddaddy. Two back springs, but again, same setup. Got that main clip point blade, nice belly on it. 307. I really like the size of this. And if you didn't know, Camillus and Schrade actually made the early buck slip joints up till 1986, I believe. And then that's when Buck actually started making their own slip joints because they didn't have the tooling and the machines to make slip joints, but Camillus and Schrade already were pumping out their slip joints, so they contracted out. Buck 307. There are other knives in the 300 series. There's like a Buck 311, that's a trapper. A Buck 313, and that's a, I believe that's a bird knife. They have a buck 317, 
the Trailblazer. It's like a big, a big folding knife. I still haven't found those, but hopefully in the future. So we'll move on to the 700, 700 series. And basically it's the same kind of setup as the 300 series, but this is like the higher end version with wood handles. So this is the Buck 7, 705. There you go. There's a little knife. Got that clip point. They do, they do not make these 700 series anymore. But you can still find them on eBay for a for a larger price. These go more than the 300 series. A baby sheep's foot. You can see the wood looks really good. I just wish they made these still. I guess there wasn't a good enough market for them. Then we have this is the buck. Let's see what we got here. Buck 709. Also two bladed knife. Clip point and like a pen blade. And none of these slip joints have half stops. Buck did not put half stops on their slip joints. Kind of have a different shield. You just have a, a typed buck on there. And these whole, all these 700 series have a different typed buck, not the hammer and other knife cutting into a bolt or nail shield. So here is the buck 704. This is a single bladed knife. And I think this is the same size. No, a little smaller. Yeah, a little smaller than the 302. Alrighty. You can see right here the shield is kind of in a fancy cursive writing. Right there. Oh, there we go. Okay, you gotta zoom here. Okay. So one blade. Okay. Had some camera issues, but I'm gonna keep going. So here is the Buck 703. And this is a Stockman, like a medium sized Stockman. You have those three back springs, no liners. This one's in really good shape. Made in the 90s. Got the clip point. You have a spay, kind of like a stubby spay. And let's get this guy out. That sheep's foot. Very nice. Good size. About the same size as the 301. Or sorry, the 303. This is like the prettier sister. <laughs> All right, and then the biggest one is the Buck 701. This is the larger Stockman pattern. Yeah. I just love Buck knives. I don't know what it is about them. I think it's their history and the the old school look of the knives. And they don't really do that many crazy things with their patterns. Kind of like Case and Rough Rider do. They're always coming out with new patterns. But Buck, I mean, they their slip joints have remained the same over many, many, many years. And they don't really do many different things with them. They might change the handles, but that's pretty much it. All right. Let's roll into the Buck 500 series. And I'll start with the smallest one. This is a little guy. This is the Buck 505. Yeah, really tiny. 
Got these wood covers, no shields on the on the 500 series. Very tiny. It is a little smaller than the the buck 55. So if you want a smaller knife, buck 505 might be a good choice. They do not make these anymore, sadly. A lot of these they don't make anymore. I think out of all these, they don't make any of these. They only make the 301 and the 303 right now. And then they still make the 55, 110, or 112 and 110. And then these are actually China made knives that they still make, but we'll get to those. So here is the 503 buck, single bladed, lock back, good pocket carry knife, mid size, very light. You can get a four finger grip on it. And these are all stainless steel blades. Actually, every single knife on this table is stainless steel. Buck 503. And here's the Buck 501. Just a little larger than the 503. But nothing much different. I think, I think the 503 and the 55 are pretty much the same size. Yeah, just different bolsters and a little bit different shaped blades. You have a clip point on this one. You have more of a drop point on the 503. Okay. There we go. And we got this big boy. This is the Buck 500. I think Duke it is. This is a thick bladed knife. Got this one to use. I think it says Reed Shakoy. Shakoy. So Reed, I got your knife off eBay. Didn't steal it. But very nice knife. A little on the heavier side. It's a little thinner than the Buck 112. But pretty much the same length. The same length as the 112, but it's a lot thinner. Yeah. We don't have the exact weights. This is just a show and tell. Okay. All right, then uh, I'll go on my, my fixed blade. So this is a Buck 119, the famous 119. And I got this one because it's a 1993 version. That's my birth year. So if I can find a decent priced buck knife with a 93 stamp, I'll pick it up. But nothing special, or I guess nothing new about this knife that no one has mentioned in their reviews. But a good solid knife, good fixed blade. And it came in this sheath leather got a good snapping yeah wrap around sheath good used knife love this knife so there's the 119 and then i also really like this knife this is the 192 and it is also a 1993 version, but you get a good full hand purchase on it. This is actually a hunting slash skinning knife, but nice wood handles, brass guard, stainless steel blade. I really like the, the shape of that blade. It's in very good shape too. Solid. Feels good in the hand, and it came in this brown leather sheath. 
says 192 on the back. Very cool. Fits right in there. Wrap around. Not going anywhere. Alrighty. So there's my fixed blade bucks. I'm gonna show you my China made bucks. Not sure if you're interested in these, but I'm gonna show them anyway. Because I still like them and they're good functional knives. So here's a buck 379. You actually have bone covers here. China. This is a slippy. Good snap. I'm really impressed with the buck China made knives. They're actually pretty good quality for what you pay. These like mo most of these knives go between like 15 and 20 to 25 dollars. Brand new. Here's your single blade knife. I think it's the same size as I think the 309. Yeah. Same size. But the 309 has two blades. And then you have the Buck 373 Stockman. This is a medium sized Stockman. And again, you have Buck's famous three back springs with no brass liners, all stainless. Nice clip point, that buck stamp, 373. Just a standard stockman, your sheep's foot. And then that spay blade. But really like this knife. These bolsters are not brass. They're a nickel silver with kind of like a brass look to them. They have that golden Buck shield with wood covers. Looks really nice. This is the same size as the Buck 373, just China version. Three back springs. If you buy a Buck 373 new, it's going to come with three back springs. Because this is an older version. This one only has two. Alrighty. And then this is one of my favorite China made Bucks. The Buck Canoe, this is the Buck 389. But they did a very good job on the bone and the fit and finish of this knife. It was like $20, brand new, but good walk and talk. Buck 389. I'm not sure if I said 379 earlier, if I did. It's supposed to be 389. There we go. Those nice pins. Nickel silver bolsters. And most of the blade still is like 420J2 for these Chinese made bucks instead of 420HC that are heat treated by Paul Bose, their boss. Sorry if I pronounced his name. And then you have the large Buck 371 Stockman. The large frame. Kind of this peach seed bone jigging. Yeah. Very similar to the Buck 301. China. Got that sheep's foot. And again, no half stops, spay, same size as the 301. And the same thickness, because both have three back springs. But very good knives. I wouldn't count out the Chinese made bucks. So this is actually a Two bladed, like medium size toothpick from Buck. You have that nice, like reddish wood. So you have this main blade clip point. This is the Buck 388. 388. And then you have a spade blade as your secondary, which is kind of unique. 
because most toothpicks only have one blade, whether it be a large, medium, or small toothpick. But I think it's cool, unique. It looks good. Pretty good fit and finish for this buck toothpick. And then I also have a buck, I think 385, small toothpick. They came in, in um, a package together. Also have that red wood, buck shield. Three eighty five, yeah. Just a normal toothpick. Right. China. But you can see the three eighty eight is a lot larger <laughs> than the three eighty five. And then I have two modern um locking knives that I want to show you. I know this isn't really consistent with my channel, but that I'll show you all my buck knives. So this is a Buck 365, very good light knife, USA made. There we go. I actually take this one to go work out. I'll clip it to my shorts and like in my waistband and go work out. It's just very light, that's what I use it for. And it's very sharp, very, very sharp. One hand opening, you have that middle lock back design. And that deep carry pocket clip, the buck symbol. Buck 365. And then I have a buck 110 slim. I know it's very flamboyant. Um, kind of my camping or hiking knife, just in case if I lose it, I can easily find it. Buck 110, same size as the OG buck 110. There you go. But as you can see, it's a lot lighter and slimmer than the Buck 110. Obviously not as tough, but you still have the same steel. So you have 420 HD steel with that famous heat treat. Deep carry pocket clip. It's kind of an ugly pocket clip in my opinion, but you, you can remove it if you want. Get that Buck symbol on there. And this is like a some kind of plastic material for the handles but very functional useful knife lock back design you can also switch the pocket clip to this side if you want for left-handed carry there's the buck 110 slim in really bright green <laughs> zombie green all right that should be it thank you for watching um hope you enjoyed this video hope i killed some of your time if you're bored but all right, like the video, subscribe if you want to see more videos. All right, see ya.